Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is a tutorial video for Adobe's Photoshop program. You'll find links in the description for any materials used in this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, and also share the video. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get into the video. In this Photoshop video, we're going to change the coloration of the eyes in here. It's a pretty straightforward process and I have my own particular way of doing this. So let's go ahead and get started. First off, taking a look at the eyes, you'll notice in here that we have a you know basically a perfectly round shape in here for the iris. So that's our first clue. We're going to be starting off with a round shape. And we can get that exactly by grabbing the ruler over here, left hand side, pull in a little guideline here. I'm going to pull it in just a little bit past the edge. Let's do another one on the right hand side again just a little bit past the edge on that one as well. And then I'll pull one down from the top. Same thing just a little bit past the edge on the bottom. So we're just inside of that shape. Let's now switch over here to the elliptical marquee tool. Come down to the bottom left corner, hold the shift key down, and then pull up. This is going to give you a perfect circle, just like that. Now notice on this one that I have feathering set for 10 pixels on this. So I'm going to have a soft edge on this selection. That gives me just a basic selection at the size that I want. Now I'm going to be using this same selection on the other eye, so let's save this. Go up here to Select, Save Selection. I'll just call that Eyes, choose OK. So I've saved my selection. Now we no longer need our guidelines at this point. We're done with those. We can get rid of the guidelines. That's View and Clear Guides. Just remove those. Now I want to do this whole thing on a new layer. I don't want to be touching my background layer. So let's grab the background layer, drag it down here to the New Layer button, and that just makes a copy of that. We'll be working on this copy. Now I want to make a layer mask they will mask out just this part of this eye on this layer. So let's hit the New Layer Mask button, and that will automatically give us a new layer mask, as you can see here, with that part selected. If I hide the background there, you can see it right there. Notice the soft edge that we had. That's that 10 pixel feathering that I did on that soft edge. Uh, you also notice that the selection is round but we don't want to have the whole thing. We want to get rid of some of this up here, the eyelid and the eyelashes, so we can take care of that. Now, if you look again over at the layer mask, you'll see that the black part is hiding everything and the white part is showing everything. So, all we need to do is to paint black where we want to hide that eyelid onto the layer mask that will then hide that part. So, let's bring this back up again. Make sure your color is on black. Grab a paintbrush and I have it set at a fairly soft setting, but about halfway through here. And I'm just going to paint right across the top, just kind of follow the edge of that lid right there. Okay, now I'm going to hide the back and just take a look. There's a little bit up there, I'll just clean that out. So that takes care of the first eye. That's our first eye set up. Maybe just a little more right in there. Just trying to follow that edge of that eye and that looks pretty good. Okay, first one's done except I also, as we're going to be changing color, I just want to change the color on the iris itself and not on the pupil. So I want to hide this pupil as well. So just take your brush. Now mine's already about the right size. This happens to be 57 pixels on this particular image. Notice that it's just a little bit, if I zoom in here, just a little bit smaller than the actual pupil just like that. So I'm going to click in here one, two, three, four times and that should do a good job. And there we are. So that just kind of hides that section for us. Okay, now let's zoom back out again and I want to do these same steps on the other eye over here and I want to start with the same size for my pupil so that my pupils match size. We can do that of course Make sure that you're still on your 
layer mask over there. Just notice the white outline. Go up to select, load selection, and eyes was the one that I did. So I did the wrong eyes there actually. I'm going to do that again here. Let's go up to select, load selection, and look at the channel down here. And the most recent is at the bottom of the list. Choose OK, and there it is the one we just did. Now to move this, make sure that you're on a selection tool. I'll just go back to the elliptical marquee tool. I can now drag this over to this eye. And then using the cursor keys, the arrow keys on my keyboard, I'll just tap that into position. There we are, so that's where I want it. Now I want to fill this with white because of course white shows and black hides. So let's reverse our colors here paint bucket and fill and that fills it with white. So far so good. We can now zoom in on this side. There we go and I can deselect that. If I hide the background layer, there we go. Now I want to do the same thing here. I want to cut in right along the eyelid and then using black on that. So let's reverse our colors again. Back to our paintbrush and then just follow the line of that eyelid right there. All right, let's just see how that goes. Looks good. I'm going to make sure I didn't get anything up there. And then finally, we want to do four clicks right here just in the middle of the eye. One, two, three, four. And again, my brush is at the right size for those people already. It's just inside. Same thing I did with the iris, just inside that edge. Okay, we now have up here a layer that's just showing just the irises. Now depending upon your effect you may want to go softer or harder on this outer edge. That's up to you how, how much feather you want to use. It depends upon the effect. This one just seems to work out well for this particular photograph. You'll have to have some feathering in there but the amount will depend upon how the rest of the effects would go. Now to change the eye color I'm going to use an adjustment layer in here. Let's just go over here a little bit like that. That looks good. Come up here to layer and new adjustment layer. And we're just going to be using this color balance. The reason why I like the color balance, and I'm going to make sure that this clicks here, actually clips to just that one layer. So we're not changing the background layer at all. So just that one layer. The reason I like this is that it keeps the variation of colors in the iris very very nicely so you're not losing anything. Some other techniques will tend to color everything too much. Let's say I wanted to have this as a blue eye. I'll bring in more cyan. There we go. Again notice how we're getting some some blues and some browns and other colors in there. We still have a lot of variation and that gives us a much more naturalistic look. Let's so bring in some more blue and a little bit of green to that, just a touch. Now it's coming in pretty dark, as you can see. I have this set at mid-tones. You can also adjust your highlights if you want to. Bring the highlights up a little bit. A little more light in there. I think that looks kind of nice. So it's a bit of a, a deep blue eye at this point. And if I look at the other side, looks great as well. Notice that it looks perfectly natural. That there's no obvious in here, no obvious item in here showing that this is a, a faked eye color. Let's say you wanted to have this as a brighter eye. That's easy to do. Come down to this same layer and we're going to lighten up the eyes on the layer. I don't want to lighten up the layer mask or the adjustment layer. I want to lighten up the eyes themselves. So layer and new adjustment layer levels choose OK. Now because I have one layer clipped to that one the other adjustment will automatically clip as well. Now here is where you can adjust the values. I can bring the darks up a little bit because a little more detail in there. I can bring the, the lights up and then I can use this to lighten the whole eye right in there. So you can carefully adjust exactly how much you have. Notice I bring the blacks up that gives my darkers a little more detail and that gives me the effect of having more stuff happening in there which again makes it look more naturalistic. You can use the lower layer here to also lighten those eyes up a bit. 
these are your output levels, these are your input levels on the output level. You can go back and forth and just kind of tweak these around until you get just the right, just the right setting on that. And don't go too far with these because it'll begin to look fake. If I pull this over, you see how it kind of washes out, kind of blocks everything up. I've taken that too far, so don't go too far on these controls. You want to keep these fairly, fairly subtle. But I think we're pretty good there. It looks pretty, pretty natural at this point. So there's a blue eye. I'm just going to back out a little bit here. There it is. You see how realistic those eyes look now. So here's the original and here's the new blue eye color. Let's say you wanted to have a different eye color in here. You wanted to have a green. I'm going to leave the levels alone. Let's come back up here to our adjustment layer for the color. I'm going to grab this layer, drag it down to the new layer button, make a copy of that. It looks strange for a second because I have these overlapping. This, by the way, is a trick you can do if you want to really accentuate. Just duplicate your adjustment layers. You can do some really interesting things, but I don't want that for this picture. Let's go back to our natural look. And in this case, I want to change the eye color. Notice I hid that one blue layer. This is my blue. And then let's double click on this layer. And let's just bring in some more green in here. And pull a little bit more red in. And just kind of shift these more towards the green side of things. There we go. So we now have green eyes on that. So there's my blue eyes. There's my green eyes. I can always go back and tweak the levels as well to get the amount of light in those eyes. Real easy way to do this. Now if you want to take this even further, have some fun with this, just go on to your color layer and change your blending mode up here. Lots of different blending modes to choose from. I'm going to be using the wheel on my mouse and I'm just going to roll through these. Notice see some of the different things that happen. There's a color burn, darker color, Lighten gives a kind of gray eye effect. Screen is a real light effect. Color dodge, kind of an interesting, almost marble kind of a look to the eyes in there. There's a linear dodge, real light. But notice we still have a lot of, of color variation, a lot of detail in there. That makes the eyes look very, very realistic. And as I scroll down here on these things, there's soft light, hard light. You get some real strange things get further on down here. Here we go. Some real interesting weird looking eyes just by changing the blending mode this is how the color layer here blends into the background there now this one is luminosity it's just taking the lighter values and applying those that are giving us lighter brown eyes okay i'll put that back to the normal again so there's the blue eyes there's the regular there's the blue let's switch over to the green eyes there we go blue eyes, green eyes, and regular eyes. So as you can see, easy to do. The whole trick really is to come in and make your careful mask right down here so that you're just working with just the eyes on this layer. Your original stays put and then simply using levels control and an adjustment layer for color, color balance in here. You can give your eyes any color you want and retain all that nice detail inside the eyes, making them look very, very realistic. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.